Switching gears now to our weather, what a welcome sight all that rain was yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. well, several areas of Southern California got record amounts of rain. In fact, the storm system started in Northern California where they got several inches from what was called a bomb cyclone. But how much a difference will that storm make in our very serious drought? Well, to help us break it all down, we are bringing in our Olga Ospina as well as Mark Jackson with the National Weather Service. Uh, Mark, uh, thanks so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me. We want to start things off with, of course, Northern California. Mark got a lot more rain than we did. Sacramento sent a record. The Bay Area had its wettest October day. So what will our water situation down here in Southern California be like? Will it, will it make a difference? Well, it was a tremendous storm. I mean, this was especially for October. It was a, we, we get precipitation in October across the state at times, but not typically this heavy and this fast. So. It does make a difference. Um, it's not all of the difference. Keep in mind that uh, in order to get out of a drought, you need to have multiple storm, multiple storms like this that add up into a wet season. And with a wet season, um, then you can start putting a dent into that drought. But there's still times that you would even benefit from having back-to-back -back wet mm -hmm. seasons. And so for Southern California, our water supply basically comes from there's the aqueduct that comes out of the Delta. There's the aqueduct, the Los Angeles aqueduct that comes out of the Southern Sierra. Both of those water sources did very well with this storm and including tremendous uh, snow up in the Sierra, which snow is always the, the gift that kept, keeps on giving when it comes <laughs> to water. So between those sources and then also uh, the, so any sort of uh, um, replenishment of groundwater in Southern California, it can help but it's certainly not everything that what we really need to get out of the drought. Sure. Mark, does it make a difference that we got all that rain in one day versus over several days? Mm -hmm. Well, the better storms are always the storms that can produce a lot of precipitation over a longer period of time. Any time that you have intense precipitation that comes down in short periods of time, now you're talking about issues with flash flooding. There were issues with flooding up in Northern California. Uh, we did uh, pretty much dodge a bullet down here. We did have some flooding issues down down south in El Dorado Canyon. But for the most part, you can consider the rain that we got through Southern California, even though it did only occur over about a 12 hour period as fairly beneficial rain. But again, you don't want it to happen too fast and too much and too a little time because that's when you start having multiple problems. Mm -hmm. And Mark, how many storms like this would we need to get to be considered getting out of the drought? Mm. Uh, I know we got a lot of moisture in our soils as well. If you could also talk to us about what kind of impact that would make for wildfire season here. Right. For wildfire season, this may have paused wildfire season for a while. And you have certain fuels and vegetation out there that, that got wet. And But over time, and especially as we're going to get warmer this week with warmer temperatures, those fuels and that vegetation starts to dry out again. And now we're back to our high fire, fire season status. So it only pauses it. What we need to really kind of end the fire season, it goes back to these back to back systems. And a good, you know, in Southern California, a good five to eight inches of rainfall uh, can possibly end our fire season for a while. Um, when, it, when it comes to um, how, many, um, how many of these systems can we or should we have before we really kind of get out of a drought? Uh, we're in such a serious drought when you consider that um, over almost over half of the state of California is, is in what's considered an exceptional drought. And we don't recover from that really overnight. And so when you look at, at the winter, we need a wet winter and then we need another wet winter after that. But certainly if we had an above average precipitation season, that would make a big difference. And that leads me to ask you, uh, what is the prediction of rain uh, for this upcoming year? I know that La Nina conditions have been developing and uh, Noah announced that uh, it looks like there's about a 90% chance of those conditions continuing as we head into the uh, winter time. Uh, can you talk to us about what that means for rain here in Southern California? Right. Historically speaking, uh, when we have La Nina's, whether it's a weak La Nina or a strong La Nina, Historically speaking, we, the odds are that we have a dry winter as opposed to an El Nino. Now that doesn't automatically guarantee that we'll have a dry winter. And as we know, we've had strong El Ninos in recent memory that were actually uh, fairly dry. But when you look historically at the, at, at the records, 
When we have a La Nina, it typically ends up being dry the farther south you go through California. So it's difficult to look out even past a month or two months, let alone a whole season. Right now, we can only hope that this might be one of those anomalies, that it's a yeah. weak La Nina yeah. that ends up being wet down here. But right now, it's pointing towards being a dry winter. All right. Mark Jackson from the National Weather Service, thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks for having me. And thank you, Olga. <laughs>